My next guest has not been too happy with the Federal Reserve, so how is she going to feel when they pump up the volume even more? Talking about a lot more cash and assistance, let's go to Walzer Wealth Management President Rebecca Walzer. Rebecca, you know, it looked like one of those bad news, good news scenarios, right? Because we were drifting pretty good this morning. All the major indices are down. Look at 830 this morning, sharp. As soon as GDP comes out, we have this explosive rally. I think Wall Street is expecting even the, uh, the Fed to prime the pump anymore. You think that would be a mistake, though? Well, obviously, you know, I think it, it's a mistake to believe in modern uh, monetary theory, which basically believes you can print money like water indefinitely. There's never even going to be any repercussions, and this is how we're going to go from here on out. And if that is what we believe now, which I don't believe, Charles, then we don't have any reason to ever stop. And with, uh, you know, Janet Yellen now in the Treasury Department, former Fed chair, we've got an uh, administration here working with the Fed that is very pro uh, this this theory that I certainly don't agree with. I mean, basic fundamentals, Charles. Money is valuable because it's scarce. And the second you start treating like it's not scarce, it becomes not scarce. But, but to your point, uh, and, and I hear exactly where you're coming from, the other side will say, this is an argument that Republicans or, or folks with conservative you know, financial orthodoxy really railed about for eight years under President Obama. He was running up the country's credit card and we were supposed to go off a fiscal cliff. Uh, fast forward 16 years later, uh, and you know, after finding trillions of dollars for Wall Street uh, over and over again, what's wrong with just running up this credit card because maybe we never have to pay the piper. In other words, I, I think ultimately wherever we've got to go, wherever that cliff is, we're gonna get there. I don't see any sort of self-restraint happening between here and there, whatever, wherever that place may be. Well, and, and unfortunately, Charles, you're 100% right, because the way people learn their lesson is that the economy basically collapses. You get to a unsustainable point. And you'll notice, Charles, even though everything you just said is 100% true, what did they have to do along that path? They had to cut interest rates next to not, almost zero, because we can't afford, and this is the truth, people don't understand this, as interest rates go up, the American government doesn't collect enough, enough tax revenue to afford just the servicing on the debt at higher interest rates, let alone all of the other government expenditures that we have. So now we're in a situation where we almost can't afford rates to normalize beyond all this low to zero. Right. And in fact, Charles, we could be looking at negative rates. So there are repercussions. And I'm just sorry, I'm going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -to -toe with any other economist who says that we can print money forever. That's not to say that there's not a time and a place for government stimulus. Obviously, shutting down your economy and a global pandemic, necessary. But we are in a very dangerous place right now, Charles, where we either reopen, like you just said, and get back to a normal type of organic society of economics, or we just start to print money forever. And now we can go to universal basic income. Everyone can just stay at home. We don't need to have jobs. And let's just, let's just, if it's, if it's that easy, if the government can just do it forever, why aren't we doing it? Well, because it doesn't work. Well, speaking of government, uh, I want to get your thoughts quickly on, on uh, President Biden and this avalanche of executive orders. Uh, now prominent Democrats are saying, you know what, this $1.9 billion deal, we're just going to ram it through. I, I'm hearing folks like Senator Schumer and others are just saying, forget about the notion of bipartisanship. There's no room for compromise. $1.9 trillion, we're going to push it through the first chance we get. What do you think? Well, let's see, that took uh, eight days of the new administration to get to that point. Did we really try? Did we give it a real, uh, you know, the real college heave-ho? I mean, w we tried to have bipartisanship. Eight days in, we're saying, forget it. It's, it's our way or no way, and that's it. So, I mean, I think you're leaving around half the country behind when you govern from a, uh, within eight days of a new administration. You say, too bad, we're not, we're not compromising, we're going forward. That, that didn't, the unity didn't last very long, and that's very scary. It's yeah. very scary to have, you know, a blue house, a blue Senate and uh, the Biden administration and them saying eight days into this new administration, uh, we're just going to do what we want and we don't care about bipartisanship. Yeah, and, I mean, not good. to your point, most Hollywood marriages last at least that long, right? <laughs> Rebecca, thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. Well, sure.